Welcome to Miss Lovedell's video on volcanoes, earthquakes, and plate tectonics. What's the connection? During this video, you will learn how the movement of Earth's plates creates volcanic activity and earthquakes. And by the end, you'll understand how plate movement has changed Earth's landforms over time. This map shows the margins of the Pacific tectonic plate and the surrounding region. So if you look here, you can see South America and then the east, the west coast of the United States, all the way up to Alaska. And then over here is Asia, China. And then coming back down here along the edge of the Pacific Plate is Australia. The red dots show the location of active volcanoes. Notice how the majority of the volcanoes are focused along the plate boundaries. For this reason, this area is known as the Pacific Ring of Fire. But why are volcanoes located at the edges of the plate boundaries? Well, because that's where the action is. Subducting, rifting, all kinds of tension is built up at our plate boundaries. Volcanoes can be formed in three ways. The first way is through subduction. The subducting plate, in this case an oceanic plate, dehydrates and forms magma that will rise through the crust to be erupted at the surface. Another way is through rifting. In this case, two plates are pulling apart from each other, and in that thinner area, magma is able to rise and erupt at the surface. In this case, the eruptions are occurring on the ocean floor. The third way that volcanoes can be formed is through the action at hot spots. Hot spots do not necessarily form along a plate boundary. Hotspot volcanoes can form in the middle of a tectonic plate. So here's an example of a hotspot right there in the middle of the Pacific Plate. Here's North America and the, the west coast of the United States just to give you a little bit of reference. Can anybody guess what these two hotspots are? The answer is Hawaii. The Hawaiian island chain is a series of islands formed by the Pacific Plate traveling over a hot spot in the middle of the Pacific Plate. The newest and most active volcano in the Hawaiian chain is located over the hot spot right now. As you travel along the island chain, the rock becomes older and older and is gradually eroding and sinking below the sea. These islands used to be over the hot spot, but as the Pacific Plate moved away from the hot spot, the island stopped growing. Geologists can use the age of islands in a chain to track the change in location of a plate over time. So what are hot spot volcanoes and how are they formed? First of all, a hot spot is a location on the Earth's surface that has experienced active volcanism for a long period of time. The source of the volcanoes is a mantle plume of hot magma material rising up from near the core mantle boundary and through the crust to the surface. A mantle plume can rise at any location in the mantle, and that's why hotspot volcanoes are independent or separate from the tectonic plate boundaries. The Hawaiian island chain is an example of hotspot volcanoes. Hotspots commonly form volcanic island chains like the Hawaiian Islands. These result from the slow movement of a tectonic plate over a fixed hotspot. So that means that the hotspot is not moving, the plate is actually moving. Therefore, at one end of the island chain, you see the youngest and most active volcanoes directly over the hotspot, and then along the island chain, the extinct volcanoes become older and older and older and gradually erode to fall back beneath the sea. This way, a geologist can use the volcanic island chain to track the movement of the tectonic plate over time. So, earthquakes and plate tectonics, what's the connection there? Well, as you can see in this diagram, earthquakes are not randomly distributed around the globe either. The black dots on this map of the world show where earthquake activity is occurring. And just as with the volcanoes, earthquakes are happening along the boundaries of our plates. Here's South America again. 
Here's North America, lots of earthquake activity on the west coast, and then some on the east coast as well. And then going along the northern part of the map, we come down along China and Japan and the continent of Asia, and then back around the edge of this Pacific plate to Australia. At plate boundaries, friction causes the plates to stick together. When enough energy is built up and causes them to break, earthquakes can occur. Earthquakes also occur whenever magma moves. Sometimes moving magma causes, an, causes a volcanic eruption, and sometimes it doesn't. We know that there are three types of plate boundaries. Remember, convergent, divergent, and transform. Movement and slipping along each of these types of plate boundaries can form an earthquake. Depending on the type of movement, the earthquake can occur either really shallow or really deep. The majority of tectonic earthquakes are shallow. Shallow means less than 50 miles deep. But in very deep subduction zones where old, cold oceanic crust descends be beneath another tectonic plate, deep focus earthquakes may occur at much greater depths, up to 700 kilometers or 500 miles deep in the Earth's crust. Earthquakes may also occur in volcanic regions and are caused there by both tectonic faults and by the movement of hot molten rock or, mo or magma within a volcano. Such earthquakes can be a very early warning sign of a volcanic eruption. To summarize, volcanoes and earthquakes are closely linked to the boundaries of tectonic plates and hotspot volcanoes can occur in the middle of a tectonic plate. We have two new vocabulary words, hotspot and the Pacific Ring of Fire. And don't forget your three R's. Go back and review your notes. Make sure everything's clear. Do a reflection on each left side of your notes. That can be either a 30-word summary, an illustration, a diagram, or a bubble map. And finally, answer these questions. Explain the relationship between plate tectonics and volcanoes and explain how you would determine the direction that a plate was moving based on a hotspot island chain. And now you know the connection between volcanoes, earthquakes, and plate tectonics. Thanks for watching.